To take a look at how to tackle community transmission of COVID-19 is a medical practitioner, Dr. Lumide Okolaja. He joins us via Zoom. Thank you, Dr. Lumide, for joining us this morning on the news. Good morning, Dr. Lumide. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you for joining us on the news this morning. Thank you very much. My, um, all right. Nigeria just recorded 176 new cases. It appears the numbers of our new cases recorded this week dropped if compared to the number of new cases recorded um, daily two weeks ago. Your thoughts, please. Well, um, the number of cases recorded today is very dependent on the number of tests that we're able to do and also the area that we're able to capture or cover or where the samples are coming from. I think that a sudden or a decline in the number of cases is not exactly indicative of a decline in the spread of the disease. And if you look at the case in Lagos yesterday, um, uh, Lagos, they recorded the highest it has ever recorded uh, previously, which was about 179 cases in a single day. And so it, it just is a function of whether the samples that were taken were from uh, an area that um, you know was high in the infection, or you know, or not. So it's uh, it's not exactly an indication of whether the cases are going down or not. In fact, um, from the modeling that have been that has been done, uh, there is an indication that we will see more infections going up in the coming few weeks. While the battle to curtail community transmission rages on, can you make us understand some of the implications of this? Sorry, I didn't hear that. All right. While the battle to curtail the transmission of the disease ravages on, can you make us understand some of the implications of the community transmission of, of the disease ravaging on? Uh, you see, the unfortunate thing is a, a lot of people still, uh, as funny as it may sound, they still don't believe that this um, a pandemic exists, and a lot of people are also not following the um, the rules that have been laid down. So you see people that are not appreciating um, social distancing or are not wearing their masks properly. You know, uh, people that when they wear their mask, it's under their nose or it's under their chin. And unfortunately, these are the factors that will continue to progress uh the the pandemic um in most cases if you do get this virus it may not affect you so you may not even know that you have it but the dangerous thing about the virus is that it may then affect somebody that you love or that you care about especially the vulnerable groups um in the elderly population and also those that have comorbid states and you may now have to live with the burden of knowing that you were the one that facilitated um, that transmission uh, and, and got this person infected. So it is important that to curtail the community spread, we adhere to the laws that have been laid in terms of um, staying at home if you can, and if you can't, ensure that you maintain social distancing and you adhere to washing your hands and wearing your face masks properly. One of the difficulties associated with community transmission is contact tracing. How is this being handled in Nigeria, and what is the best approach? You see, um, contact tracing is, uh, you know, there, there are two levels of contact tracing. When the index case first came into Nigeria, um, there was a need to, to do contact tracing because you wanted to, as much as possible, extract uh, people from, that have gotten, or gotten infected from community and put them into a place where they can no longer infect other people. But in a situation where we have mass community spread right now, contact tracing is a bit redundant because a, a lot of people have it. And to, 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 trace, to trace people that, uh, you know, that have come in contact with an infected person may actually be more cost, uh, you know, um, heavy than actually treating the people that have the infection. The unfortunate thing, again, is that because there is massive community spread, the number of people that have the infection are actually unknown, except you de de develop symptoms and you're tested. 
or except you randomly test, then you may know that you're positive. So um, the only focus that contact tracing is, is, is on right now are for people that, are, that have been exposed to known um, infected people. So that is the focus right now. But in terms of contact tracing, uh, you know, everyone, it, it might be a redundant process. Dr. Olumide, can you help us understand this development where some COVID-19 survivors claim they were treated with malaria drugs, fueling the suspicion that high fever or malaria could have been mistaken for COVID-19? You see, the unfortunate thing again about the COVID-19 infection is that it is very similar to the malaria infection, similar in terms of the presentation of the symptoms. And in a lot of cases, we have seen situations where people that have the COVID-19 infection also have the malaria infection. Um, al although these symptoms are similar, uh, it is better not to take uh, any you know, risk and ensure that if you do have the COVID-19 uh, infection and you're being you're symptomatic, you access the care that is required. Um, before COVID came on board, people have been, you know, getting other uh, diseases and been dying from them, including malaria. So if you're treated with an anti-malarial uh, regimen uh, while on COVID-19, the, the presence of COVID-19 in your system does not negate um, the ability for you to get malaria. They both share similar symptoms. And in fact, a lot of times, we, you know, we get calls that people uh, are, they've treated themselves for malaria, but yet the symptoms persist, which is when they come in to test for, you know, the COVID uh, infection. So it's important that <coughs> people understand that the symptoms or the symptomology of the COVID-19 is similar to that of the anti-malarial treatment. And um, now... The tests are done consecutively uh, on both. And if you're found to have anti-malarial, you will be treated for, uh, if you're found to have malaria, you will be treated with anti-malarials um, to try to abate your symptoms. Dr. Olamide Okulaja, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me.